Whoa, the bank sure is a mess. I see the locomotive really wrecked the place when it derailed and smashed into the bank. It's pretty old, but I bet it could be fixed. It's really old. Probably stopped working a long time ago. It'd make for a lovely decorative antique if someone cleaned it up. This is really run down. All I see are old papers covered in dust. Then there's that metallic object down there. Hmm, not a clue what this is, but it seems to be in pretty good shape despite years of sitting on that shelf. Okay, I'll take it. Whoa, this looks like a stapler. Quite rudimentary it is. Definitely a model from the 19th century. I'd better take the staples that were lying next to the stapler. They look similar to the rivets used by cobblers. I bet this was JT Douglas's desk. I bet this was J.T. Douglas's desk. B.D. Bank of Douglasville, I suppose. A big piece of the floor is missing. A blunt object must have fallen down and made that hole. I don't see why I would want to go in there. Let's see, way at the end I see a cell and <gasps> I can't believe my eyes, there's a dead body. Oh man, that guy must have been rotting away for a hundred years. I wonder whether that poor devil died inside there or if he'd already kicked the bucket before they stuck him in there. It's locked shut. must be for that stove over there. All right. I don't think anyone will need them to light up the stove. Five nice logs. Hmm, might come in handy. There's still some old wanted signs up offering a reward for capturing the bad guys. Well, I'm no bounty hunter, and even if I were, I'm afraid all of these guys have been six feet under for at least a century. There aren't any weapons left, just the chain that held them up. I can't, it's fixed to the cabinet. I don't think I'll need it anyway. An old frayed hat, a couple of pages from an old newspaper, and an oil lamp. Ah, uh, nothing of this will help me out. I'm not interested in that.
This must have been a supply wagon, because it has some sort of strap attached to an iron ring at the edge. And there are more similar rings at each end of the wagon on both sides. I bet the strap passed through all of those rings over the goods to keep them from moving around on those dusty, bumpy old roads. It's tied to one of the iron rings. I can't tear it off. Okay, let's make a real clean Eastwood entrance. Hey, how cool. An automatic door opening system. And they say the Old West was wild and dangerous. Well, well, well. This looks like a botanical garden. It's got dirt inside, but nothing has been planted in it. Okay. Maybe I'll find something to plant in it. Let's see what I find here. It's a sort of shed stocked with a wide range of gardening tools. Seeds, tools, chemicals, that kind of stuff. Let's see. Hmm, these pruning shears may be of use. Oh, it's one of those miniature trees that have become so fashionable. I think they come from Japan. Nice little tree, but I've heard it takes lots of time and energy to care for them properly. Mm -mm. Better leave it where it is. I wouldn't be able to give it the love it deserves right now. Now, I'm not saying I don't like plants, but I can't waste any time watering them right now. Hey! Hey, pal! Hi, who are you? My name's Brian. Brian Basco. I'm Kevin, but everyone calls me Saturn. Nice to meet you, BB. BB? Those are your initials, right? I could just tell you go by BB right away. It was logical, what with your name. Well, to tell you the truth, uh, no one's ever caught. So tell me, BB, you planning on moving to these parts? Have you spoken with Sushi about this? What kind of artist are you? No, no, I, I don't plan on staying. I, I'm just passing through. Oh, well, that's something unusual, isn't it? I mean, not many people come around here just for the heck of it. Well, I'm trying to find the remains of a Hopi village. The old Indian village? Yeah, I've heard of it. Do you have any idea where exactly it might be located? Actually, I don't, which is odd because I'm quite familiar with the area. I often go out exploring to find raw materials for my inventions, and I've never come across the slightest sign of that Hopi village. Do you know of anyone who could tell me the story of that village? Hmm, let me think. I don't know. I think Sushi may have some documents from her great-grandfather. They might mention the Hopi village. Of course, Rutger hasn't got a clue. Although you never know. And, uh, Mama Dorita could know something. That story about Sushi owning Douglasville is true then, huh? Oh yes, the whole town belonged to her great-grandfather. Then it was passed down from generation to generation until Sushi inherited it from her father. I met Sushi on the internet through a chat room. We got along really well and became friends quite fast. When she proposed the idea of moving away to this town to live at peace with our creative spirits, well, I didn't think twice. I haven't met Rucker yet. Well, he's out of town. He told me he was going on an expedition in search of plants and roots. When you meet him, you'll see what a swell guy he is. He joined up with us to move out here so he could devote himself fully to his great passion, botanical gardening. What do you know about Mama Dorita? Well, I've only seen her on one occasion. 
I got her to give me an appointment to see if she could do something about my lack of inspiration. It didn't work. According to her, I lacked faith. But really, I didn't think swallowing a live spider bathed in coyote brains was going to solve my problems. Uh, that thing you're working on is totally interesting. This ensemble? I assure you, it's not one of my best works. My inspiration hasn't been up to par lately, you know? I just don't seem to be getting any ideas. Listen, about the Hopi village I'm looking for? Yes, what is it? Do you know any descendants of the Hopis that live around here? No, not a one. Though, yes, wait. I remember that Rutger told me he found a Hopi Indian in the middle of the desert one day. He said it was a very old man covered with wrinkles who claimed to be the last of the Hopi chiefs. But knowing Rutger, I wouldn't be surprised if he'd hallucinated the whole scene. This workshop's impressive. I see that besides an artist, you're quite an inventor. Yes, I like to think of myself as a modern-day Leonardo da Vinci. I combine art and science in my creations, because both combined are my whole raison d'etre. I'll let you get back to your work, Saturn. Au revoir! Adieu! The tank is pretty large. It must hold at least 50 gallons. What is this thing? Maybe it's some sort of scale. Or perhaps a cart for moving heavy items. I really can't tell. It forms part of that apparatus. Maybe it's some kind of brake. Let's see how in the world this works. Whoa! Hey, what have you done? Get your hands off my catapult. Sorry, I didn't know what it was. Well, the next time you don't know what something is, don't touch it. You wasted a whole unopened bucket of paint. Damn the day I decided to build that catapult. Hey, chill out, dude. I won't touch anything else. I hope not. Hi, Sushi. Hi, Brian. How's it going? Did you find out anything else? Um, I'm working on it. You see, there's something I want to talk to you about. Shoot. It's about your great-grandfather's mine. Sure, what is it? Do you know your way through the mine shafts to reach the Hopi village? Me? Not a chance. I've never gone into that old mine. Well, forget about the mine for a minute. Whatever. It's about the safe in the bank. What about it? I've been sifting around the ruins of the bank and I didn't find it anywhere. Yeah, well, it wasn't on the upper floor. I believe it was in the basement of the bank. You know, to be on the safe side. The bad thing is, the way into the basement was completely blocked when the locomotive crashed into the building. Hey, there's a dead body inside of a cell in the sheriff's office. Yeah, it's been there for over a century. Who was it? The town doctor. Apparently, he was a drunkard, and a kid died because of him. He was in jail waiting for his trial when the train derailed. Don't you think you should take him out and bury him properly? Well, the door was locked, and the way I look at it, that cell is the closest that guy ever got to a grave. I don't think it'd do any good to bury him at this point. And that cell is kind of like having your own pantheon. How could they let him die there in such a cruel way? The sheriff had a key to the cell, and he also died the day the train derailed. 
Legend has it, someone warned everyone that the train was speeding toward the town out of control with nobody at the helm. The sheriff rode out to where the train was and managed to climb into the driver's cab of the locomotive, but a stroke of bad luck made him fall into the boiler. The guy was burned up alive and failed to stop the train. And as I already told you, due to the derailment, everyone fled town, and nobody even thought about releasing the drunk doctor who had caused the death of a child. Back up a bit. Yes? I'm going to continue on my search. Thanks for all your help, Sushi. See you later. See ya, and good luck.